I'm Marty Stauffer. Some of the most impressive animals on Earth are birds of prey. Their piercing eyes, sharp beaks, and strong talons are part of an image of noble power that has inspired man through the ages. These aerial hunters come in all sizes, and they populate nearly every habitat. each one specifically designed for particular prey. With no predators except man, the hawks, kites, falcons, and eagles are aristocrats of the air, the spectacular birds of prey. Most birds of prey migrate to warmer climates during the severe winter months. A few, like the goshawk, are able to remain behind and still survive. Built strictly for the kill, an adult goshawk spies a red squirrel, an important source of food at this time of year. The goshawk relies on short wings and a long tail to maneuver around tree trunks and between branches. These two creatures play out their lives like a game of chess. This time, it's the squirrel which makes the wrong move.
It's forced into check by the goshawk and must pay with its life. But who knows? Maybe next time it will be checkmate for the goshawk. Many birds of prey starve in our wintry forests each year. Birds of prey have evolved for two primary purposes, to hunt and to feed. These winged marvels are equipped with large bright eyes and three sets of eyelids. From their upper beak, hooked and fashioned with razor sharp edges for tearing and cutting, to their aerodynamically layered plumage, right down to their talons which on some species are the size of a grizzly bear's claw. It's easy to see why they command the wild blue yonder. The peregrine falcon has narrow pointed wings designed for diving. The wings of all birds of prey are unique. The osprey eats only fish. Its long wings are designed for a life of soaring and hovering. The kestrel has wings somewhere in between, since it both hovers and dives. Thin or broad, short or long, rounded or pointed, each bird of prey has evolved wings for its particular style of hunting. much smaller in size, but every bit as aggressive as its larger cousins is the northern shrike. The shrike is technically not a bird of prey. Actually, it's a passeriform, or perching bird. Its diet includes insects, reptiles, and even rodents. With keen eyesight, it's capable of spotting a bumblebee a hundred yards away. Unfortunately for this mouse, camouflage does not come easily in a grassy meadow. The shrike seems to be tormenting the mouse, but this is not the case. In actuality, its small feet and beak are not well designed for such large prey. It waits for an opening, then kills the mouse quickly. Then the shrike exhibits its most well-known habit. It carries its prey off to its larder where the food is impaled on a thorn or other spiked object. This habit has earned it the nickname of butcher bird. Now with its food in a secure position for tearing, the shrike is made up for its weak feet and small talons. The food is also well protected and easily accessible for feeding to the fledgling shrikes. Contrary to popular belief, this bird does not kill for fun, but rather it maintains a storehouse for leaner times. Because of its adaptation from a lifestyle of a songbird to one of a hunter, the shrike is not very well liked, but its presence is essential in keeping population explosions of fast breeding rodents and insects to a minimum.
not much larger than the Shrike, is the smallest and most common of our falcon family, the American kestrel. Also subsisting on insects and small mammals, the kestrel sees a snake in the grass as a potential, although dangerous, meal. The kestrel watches and waits. Once it's grabbed its quarry, the kestrel slowly squeezes the life out of the snake. In the swamps of the southeast resides one of our most graceful birds. Easily identified, by its deeply forked tail and defined plumage of black and white, the swallow-tailed kite is best noted for its buoyant, seemingly effortless pattern of flight. This bird spends most of the daylight hours on the wing, where it feeds on animals such as snakes, young birds, and anole lizards. The kite snatches prey on the wing then dines aloft. Amazingly, the swallow-tailed kite doesn't even stop flying to drink or bathe. Like a swallow, it skims over the water to simultaneously wash itself and quench its thirst. As a new morning arrives, the day of a raptor is already long begun. Take for instance this sharp-shinned hawk, already feeding its young for the third time of the day. Like so many birds of prey, the sharp-shinned finds life difficult in areas populated by humans. As our population expands, we force nature deeper into areas like these remote wetlands and these sparse dry lands. Even the red-tailed hawk, America's most common and most widespread aerial predator, has been steadily declining in number since World War II. Although this open country is ideal habitat for the red tail, it must still compete with other predators. A red fox can be a worthy adversary when it comes to grabbing a quick meal. And what could be quicker than a cottontail? Like other hawks, the red tail often soars over open country in search of its prey, but is just as commonly at home atop telephone poles, haystacks, or fence posts. There it may sit for hours before gliding off to surprise its target.
With the rabbit lost in the brush, the bewildered fox drops out of the chase. The chase resumes. Fox is eager to rob the hawk of its kill, but the red tail is prepared to defend its meal. As the fox tries different approaches, the hawk maintains a defense posture. No match for the red tail, the fox once again resumes its search for food, while the red tailed hawk heads back and savors victory. Of all the winged animals, there is one in particular that has most ignited human emotions. It is the golden eagle, patriarch of the family of birds of prey. Like the red-tailed hawk, and for that matter, all raptors, the golden eagle is no stranger to competition with other hunters. And comfortable as it may seem at the moment, this bobcat is hungry and this mountain plover would surely satisfy its appetite. But the plover is simply too fast and too alert for the bobcat to capture. The staple diet of the golden eagle consists mainly of large birds, rabbits, and hares. They are, however, known to kill larger mammals up to the size of a pronghorn. As the chase ends, one of the twins returns to its mother to nurse. The other has not been so lucky. It is survival of the fittest, and the golden eagle is also subject to this rule. The eagle must now protect its prey, as well as itself, from the persistent bobcat.
True, the golden eagle resides at the top of the food pyramid, with few threats to its life other than man. But the hunter is often also the hunted. Without its strong wings, it might have been lying beside the pronghorn fawn. Still, like most eagles, this one will no doubt live to see many years, despite the loss of its prize. Only man can successfully diminish the numbers of these beautiful birds, and only man can save them. Here in northern Nevada is the Goshoot mountain range. It is here also that nets are set up and traps are rigged. No, these people are not plotting the extinction of birds of prey. They're working to delay and hopefully prevent it. They trap, measure, and band a variety of birds of prey. A pigeon dangled as bait serves as the perfect lure. From camouflaged bunkers, the bait is manipulated as if it were a marionette. They successfully attract a cooper's hawk. The hawk is carefully removed from the capture net, then taken for banding and measuring. Most birds of prey fly south for the winter. Many of those which pass over the barren dry lands of Western America stop here in Goshu. Since raptors are at the top of the food chain, they are excellent barometers of environmental quality. By regularly monitoring their populations, the Goshute project can detect declines at an early stage, when there may still be time to reverse them. The birds are checked for talon length, feather quality, weight, and size. Their health statistics are then carefully logged and filed creating a virtual census of western birds of prey. The birds are then banded and released with the hopes that many will be recovered and measured again. Projects like Goshute can only exist with our support. It is vital that the birds of prey, one of the many treasures of our natural environment, be maintained and protected. these noble animals alive, we are in fact keeping ourselves, our land, and even our world alive. The time to save these species is while they are still common. The time is now. As controllers of rodents and insects, birds of prey are decidedly beneficial and being at the top of the food chain, their strong populations usually mean an environment healthy for wildlife in general. With the increased positive attention on raptors in recent years, 
and the efforts of many wildlife groups and individuals, the future is looking even brighter for these symbols of freedom, birds of prey. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, enjoy our wild America.